All right, guys, back with another video for you today. This is a video I've wanted to do for a while. Uh, as I had gone on a trip for about two weeks, prior to that, I started buying some vintage fragrances. And on my trip, I uh, visited a perfume shop. Uh, and I bought some vintage fragrances from there as well. And I've been meaning to do this haul video of men's, mostly men's vintage fragrances, but there are a few classic female targeted fragrances in this video as well. But I've been waiting on one fragrance, sadly, it got delivered to a completely different city. So I'm going to just do this video with what I have. So today it's mostly a haul video of men's fragrances, classics. There's a few more modern version, not versions, but modern fragrances for men that are discontinued and definitely several uh, feminine classics that are in its current formulation. So if you want to find out what I bought for this particular haul video, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. Yes, today it's a haul video. Lots of different fragrances here, mostly men's classic fragrances, dating back to maybe there's the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Uh, and then the female fragrances are definitely early 1900s. And then a few more uh, modern discontinued men's fragrances. So there's a lot here. There's also an Eau de Cologne style fragrance that's an it from an Italian house that I also bought and found from uh, this uh, store, but all coming at you here in this video. But before I get to the fragrances, if this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed, please do click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. So I just recently got a haircut and I thought, I th uh, it was a good job. He did a good job, so I thought, you know what, I'll do a video without my hat on. You guys have been asking me, but usually I don't like to do videos without my hat because my hair is the most complicated hair in the world. It's really, really hard to manage. And usually when I just put a hat on, it just kind of like, I don't have to deal with the hair. But since I just came back from the barber shop, I thought, you know what, let's just do it without the, the hat on uh, because it looks good and I, don't want to put a hat on now to shoot this video, so might as well do it without the hat. And I know you guys have been asking, so this is for you. But don't count on me doing videos without the hat, because the hat is all about what my channel is all about. But today I give you a hatless video. So I've been really digging a lot of uh, vintage fragrances. So I come, it goes up, you know, in waves. So like sometimes. I'm really digging what's being released and sometimes I crave the classics so I kind of go into like this uh, side of uh, fragrances I want to explore the classics not only in their current formulation but also in their you know in their you know classic or vintage uh, formulation so there's a lot of fragrances here and I actually went to a website and I'm not going to tell you the name of this website because I'm uh, told not to share it so I can't but some of the fragrances I also bought from a perfume shop that does sell vintage and I'll let you know what they are when I get to those fragrances. But I took a chance and bought all these fragrances, some I knew, some I've never even heard of, some that's I've actually not even been opened yet. Some of them came to me or sent to me uh, unpackaged so there was no cellophane around them. So it's just going to be telling you what I'm experiencing with these fragrances and the details around each fragrance. I'll let you know if I've worn it before, I'll let you know if I've smelled it before, but all vintage classic men's fragrances. And we're going to start off right off the bat with Furio from Jacques Bogart. Do you know this one, guys? So this is a fragrance I had sampled quite a long time ago, and it was uh, kind of on the discontinued side. Uh, and I've been wanting a bottle of it, and I bought it separately from everything else. So it came from a completely different source from where everything else has come. And I'm very, very happy with it. This is Furio. Great fragrance, really, really intense. The Jacques Bogart house is great. I'm going to get back into exploring this house. I used to speak a lot about Jacques Bogart Homme. And I think for a while it was kind of like not available. And then I see that it's back. So I'll get back into the swing of things and discuss Jacques Bogart. But this one, boy, let's spray it. Because kind of for me, it reminds me a little bit of uh, something like Kuros, but a little more warmer. Uh, definitely you're getting uh, 
it seems like there's a lot of oak moss here, but you know, like those older notes, very masculine. Uh, it has uh, like pungent qualities, animalic qualities. Definitely patchouli is there, but it, it does hint at uh, something like uh, kuros, but almost like candied kuros, because there's a lot of sweet vibes with it. But either way, so glad to have this finally. Furio from Jacques Bogart. Do you guys know this one? Have you smelled it before? Man, it's a beast. It's really beastly, animalic, and definitely great to have. As I'm building the studio out and turning it into somewhat of a perfume library, uh, I wanted to have, uh, you know, vintage fragrances here so I can, when I bring on people that want to smell fragrances as clients, uh, they can come and smell not only classics, but you know the modern offerings. So that is going to be a great great fragrance to have and I'm so happy to have it. And now that I've got an air conditioner finally in this studio, I can keep this place all you know air conditioned, cool, nothing will go bad. And usually when I'm not here and no one's here... My apologies. I couldn't... And usually when I'm not here and no one's here, it's gonna be dark. So the fragrances are going to you know stay perfect in this very, very temperature controlled uh, room. So I visited a perfume shop in South Lake Tahoe, just an hour and a half from where my mom lives, not even an hour and a half, an hour and 15 minutes, a perfume shop called Fragrance Vault. Uh, I've known about her, I've known about the store. In fact, I had visited a perfume shop in Tahoe a long time ago, but no, I don't think it was the Fragrance Vault, but I'm glad I went there. I bought four or five fragrances there, vintage, and I'm gonna let you know what they are. The first one is Balenciaga's Crystal Ball. Do you guys know this one? This is so good. Balenciaga made some great fragrances for men, and they don't currently have a do they have a current men's fragrance? I don't think so. But this is the bottle. Let me show you. So this is a, I mean, she had several bottles there. I think I took one of the last remaining bottles. I shouldn't say several, probably a few. And I'm so happy I got this one. To me, it's very warm. Uh, it reminds me of a few fragrances from the late, to, uh, late 90s, early 2000s but there's a warm spiciness to it, kind of like tonka beans comes to mind. I don't really know what the notes are in here exactly, but it's warm, it's spicy, it's creamy, it's vanillic, but lightly nutty and tobacco-ish all at the same time. This is Cristobal Ohm from the house of um, Balenciaga. Now, I wish that Balenciaga made some men's fragrances, and, and I'm drawing a blank. Do they even have one? I can't think. But this is a great one to have. It's completely different than uh, Balenciaga Por Homme, which is the patchouli uh, fragrance, but uh, glad to have that one. That one I bought from the Fragrance Vault in uh, South Lake Tahoe. If you guys like vintage fragrances, that's a great place to go. Another one that I bought from the store, I always wanted a vintage bottle of Eau Sauvage, and I bought a vintage bottle from there. Now, when I was going to film school here in San Francisco at the art school here, I stayed in an apartment for a while and there was a bottle of Eau Sauvage. And that's the first time I think I discovered Eau Sauvage in the early 90s. Could have been from my dad though, but this is Eau Sauvage in its old packaging. And let me show you the original fragrance here. It seems like and this is the case with a lot of citrus focused fragrances. When you first spray citrus focused fragrances that are kind of vintage or you know older, you will notice a little change because citruses do turn a little bit. So when you spray this a little bit, it, it, you can tell that it's turned a little bit because it is what you're experiencing first in fragrances is the citruses up top. But once you get past that initial blast, it starts developing and it becomes a great scent. Really, really great scent. So glad to have this vintage bottle of Eau Sauvage from Christian Dior. You know, it used to say Christian Dior before. Uh, it now says just Dior, I think. But um, let me know who's a fan of the vintage. Let me know who's a fan of the uh, current version. And the current version, I think, is a great modern citrus fragrance for men. I think it smells great. I love it. And uh, it's perfect to wear when it's hot outside, you know, again, there's no rules, but uh, you can overspray that stuff and it will not overwhelm anyone around you. So this next one that I also bought from uh, Fragrance Vault in uh, Lake, South Lake Tahoe is uh, something that I've 
always wanted, but I never really knew about it too much. Because the bottle itself is amazing, uh, and the brand itself, I don't remember if the brand itself is doing any fragrances. They probably are not doing any fragrances for men. Maybe they're doing fragrances for women, but the house of Nina Ricci, and this is Signor Ricci. So once again, it's a, it's a vintage bottle, and this one to me seems like also it's kind of turned a little bit. But once you get past that initial blast, amazing fragrance. What a wonderful fragrance and a gorgeous, gorgeous bottle. This bottle is fantastic. Uh, let's spray this one. I didn't spray the Eau Sauvage because everybody knows about Eau Sauvage. Uh, but this one, let's spray this one a little bit. Yeah, definitely on its first spray, you can identify that it has turned a little bit. But this is kind of like along the line of Eau Sauvage. And it develops and becomes kind of uh, citrusy and maybe a little vetiver, but definitely I'm getting oak moss touches, but really a wonderful fragrance here. Signor Ricci from the house of Nina Ricci. And if you guys don't know this, Nina Ricci, uh, is it the grandson? I think it's the grandson who owns the brand um, Juliet Has a Gun. Now, if you guys didn't know this, it's either grandson or son. I think it's the grandson, though, that has started that brand, Juliet Has a Gun. But that's a little side note to that you guys can look into. Uh, but I believe it is the, the grandson. So this next one, I almost bought from the other resource. So what happened was I was planning on going on a trip. One of you guys told me about this great website, which I'm sworn not to tell about it, that has great vintage fragrances. And I ordered a bunch of fragrances the night before I left on my trip. And three days later, I went to South Lake Tahoe and I bought a bunch of other uh, vintage fragrances, four of them it looks like. I'm keep, not keeping track of the count. So this is one that I almost ordered from that website, but I went back after I bought this, noticed that they didn't have full bottles. So glad I bought this in South Lake Tahoe. This is uh, an actor turned perfume brand, Alan Delon Equitos. Do you know about this one? Boy, does this smell freaking amazing. This is what I wish fragrances smelled like today. Here's the bottle. Very, very manly, masculine, spicy, animalic, leathery, oak moss, perfection. This is perfection. The only sad thing about this fragrance is, uh, I'm gonna put some on, uh, it's, it's not a spray bottle. She had a few spray bottles there, but it didn't have the name on it like this, Equitos like that from Alain Delon. It basically had a white label on it. It said tester, but the bottle itself looked exactly like it and the cap looked like exactly like it as well. So I decided to go with the dabber because it's, it's a little more authentic looking obviously. But let me tell you a little bit about this because it is fan freaking tastic. And I don't think there's a lot of bottles left of this one anywhere. It's just, oh man, amazing, amazing scent. It's even better on me. It smells so classic, very mature, very, just like really like rough, but manly, sophisticated. Uh, just reminds me of the 80s. This stuff is what I kind of grew up on, the 80s fragrances mostly, and some 70s as well. And I think this is an amazing find for me. Probably this is one of the best finds out of the entire collection. There's a, there's a few others I'll show you, but this amazing, amazing fragrance. It's just sad that they don't make fragrances like this anymore. Uh, although I take that back. They do make some fragrances like this in the niche world, but what the designers release these days, uh, disappointing. Okay, so those are the fragrances. First I bought the uh, Furio from a separate resource, and then those additional four that I just spoke to you about are from Fragrance Vault in South Lake Tahoe. And again, I, it goes in waves. Sometimes I get into these waves and thoughts and mind uh, things. I'm like, I'm, I'm digging vintage fragrances. I like the way the bottles look. I like the way the fragrances smell, packaging. It takes me back, you know, that's what I like about it. So this will probably last me for another year and a half. Then I'll come circle back to more vintages. But along the way, I might find a few here and there. So those are those. Now let's get into the fragrances I bought from my other resource. We're going to go with this one first. So this one is 
Balestra Pour Homme. This is the only one, no, we have a few that are not opened as well. I know nothing about this and it was on this website and I actually said, okay, I looked it up, I read some reviews. When I'm looking up fragrances that are vintage, I do read reviews of people and what they write about it because I'm buying vintage fragrances that are old. They don't produce these fragrances anymore. So I wanna make sure that I'm not buying something that I'm not gonna be able to like. So I had to look them up. And even though I don't remember what I looked up about this fragrance, uh, let's go ahead and look and see. So this was not opened, it's brand new, as you can see here. Uh, and then let's look at the bottle. It's a little loose in there, if you can see that. And the bottle, oh, I love the bottle. I think I, I saw the bottle for this one and I immediately thought, okay, I'm definitely wanting that bottle. So this just sounds like an Italian house and these sprayers look very 80s, 70s to me. Uh, again, I don't remember what I read about this, but it sounded great. I hope it sprays. No, it's not spraying. Great. Let's see. Oh boy. Okay, I'm gonna come back to this one. This one is disappointing that it's not spraying. Damn it. Um, we'll see what happens. But, from that same website, hopefully the rest of them are gonna be okay. There's a fragrance I wore from uh, Versace called Baby Blue Jeans. In fact, when I bought it in the 2000s, I bought it from TJ Maxx and it was a really great discounted price. I found a bottle and I really love this. It's like a lemon powder fragrance experience. And this is when Versace did some great fragrances. Versace did some great fragrances back in the day. And sadly, not really the biggest fan of Versace fragrances, but I really loved Baby Blue Jeans. I loved it. Most people probably know about Blue Jeans. Everybody probably has that. It's like $20, you can buy it. But this is Baby Blue Jeans right here. Hopefully this one will spray. Yep, it's spraying. But what I liked about this one, as I said, it's a lemon powder. And once again, this one does seem like it has the top notes kind of turned a little bit, but it's developing. Oh yeah. Definitely becoming a very powdery, lemony experience. It's not ultra tart, it's a sweet lemon, sweet tart experience, but a great, great scent. So that's one that I really like to have. And I love that scent. I wore so much of that one. Uh, I had a large 100 ml bottle of it. And I think I still have my bottle. It's like at the very bottom. It's not hardly any left in there. Let me know if anybody is a fan of baby blue jeans. I know, like I said, uh, many of you probably know about blue jeans, but don't know if you know about baby blue jeans. They had a whole bunch of different jeans, red jeans, green jeans, black jeans, uh, metallic jeans, I can't remember, something was metallic. But the other one I bought similar is the green jeans. Now green jeans, I'm not too familiar with, and I I like the jeans series, except blue jeans is a little too much. And blue jeans I think is the current formulation. So it doesn't smell as great as some of the other jeans smelled. And there was a while that back in the 2000s, all these jeans were selling at TJ Maxx. Whenever I'd visit my mom, I'd go to TJ Maxx with her looking for perfumes. I've found some good stuff. Sadly, I, at that time, I didn't take advantage of those. But this is green jeans right here. I believe this is a citrus, uh, but I'm not 100% sure. But I've always wanted this as well. This one sprayed right away, so I wonder if it was already sprayed before. So I'm getting, I'm getting like kind of herbal minty combination of um, citruses. So this one actually, also like a mint tea kind of a thing. But this one sprayed on perfectly. Like the lemon one, the um, baby blue jeans, you can tell that it had turned a little bit up top. But this one sprays perfectly. Like I didn't have any kind of a, kind of a turn smell up top. So that's green jeans from Versace. That is a uh, pretty uh, great collection of fragrances. Sadly, the only one that's available now is Blue Jeans. At least that's what I think that's available. And I don't even know if they're, I don't think they have that on their website. Anyway, the next one 
is Barcelino. Do you guys know about this one? I think that's what it says. Let me look at my, put my glasses on so that I can. It's Borsalino. So, I'll put that off again. So this one actually, once again, I looked up the notes and I noticed that it's uh, sounded great. So that's why I bought this one. Definitely look like, it looks like a 70s bottle or 80s even. I love that bottle. Great looking bottle. Let's go ahead and smell this one. Sadly, um, I don't have a lot of space on my arms or hands to spray this stuff. Uh, so I'm going to have to report back. But this one, uh, once again, it's kind of oak mossy. It's kind of dark, a little leathery, smoky. Uh, but uh, you can tell that it's kind of brightening up. And um, maybe there's some fougere-like touches or maybe like sheeper-like touches. But what I'm smelling here, you know what? I am going to spray this one on my hand, a place that I don't have much sprayed. Uh, so I can tell you a little bit more about this one because I believe this one's supposed to be really, really great from what I read online. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it smells much better on me. Um, it it do totally reminds me of the 70s, early 80s. Kind of like that Halston-esque kind of Z14-like smell of a sheeper like a uh, fragrance but definitely on the masculine side. Really, really great, like pine trees comes to mind and things like that, cypress trees. So either way, that's Borsalino right there. So let's go with, uh, let's see, what's the name of this one? So this is Basile Womo. When you buy stuff that you don't really know much about, I'm gonna keep my glasses on. Uh, you kind of don't remember what you bought, right? So this one kind of reminded me, the bottle kind of reminded me of uh, Paco Rabanne Om. So this is Basil Womo. And on top, it's got the name. So let's smell this one. Oh boy, this one is a lot stronger than Borsalino. It's a lot greener and also I can smell civet in here. Definitely can smell civet uh, or even castorium. Wow. Green and fuzzy, pungent, but also like lots of fresh notes. And then the fresh notes I'm talking about, not citruses, because this seems like it has citrus, but it doesn't have a turned smell. More fresh notes like uh, fresh herbs. Wow, that is amazing. That smells so good. Really, really great. Uh, I think out of uh, what I've smelled from um, the new stuff, this Basil Womo, wow, amazing, amazing fragrance. We'll put that one to use. Now, this one is a fragrance I could have bought in the early 2010s but I decided not to. And at the time I didn't have a budget for fragrances. And then after a while it was discontinued obviously and it's no more selling. This is Actur from the house of Azzaro or in this case Loris Azzaro as it says on here. Do you guys know this one? I had a Facebook friend that used to talk to me or maybe he still is, I can't remember. And he used to love this one. So Actur from Loris Azaro. Loris is his Azaro's first name, I believe. So let's smell this one. Again, the bottle, as you can see the cap, and uh, not the cap, but the sprayer, very, very 80s looking, maybe even 70s. All these eau de toilettes, these are all eau de toilettes, but they were freaking beast mode back then. So this one seems like it has ambery notes, spices, Definitely patchouli, maybe even oak moss. You know, you can tell, you can tell that these fragrances smell matured. If any of you are into wines, if you have a wine bottle that's been sitting in a cool place, maybe like cool and warm at the same time because the weather fluctuates obviously, and you open it up like 30, 40 years later, you can kind of taste it like it's like it tastes old. Same thing with the perfumes. You can smell the age, it's aged. All the notes have aged. 
and you can kind of get that because this fragrance came out in the 80s, like late 80s, I believe. And I, I believe Azaro has been using the name Azaro for a while, for like since the 90s. So I haven't seen a bottle that has his name, like full name, Loris Azaro, right there. Okay, this next one, Francesco Smalto. You guys know this one? This is another one that I've been wanting to have a bottle of. Finally, I do. Sadly, it's a smaller bottle, but uh, like my Balenciaga Por Homme, which I did another um, haul video on vintage fragrances early last year uh, before the pandemic. Uh, it's a, that one's actually a 30 ml. This is a 50 ml. Francesco Smalto, Eau de Toilette for Men. Once again, it's an Eau de Toilette, but Eau de Toilettes back then are what Eau de Parfums and even pure parfum versions of fragrances because they would be beast mode and nobody would be like complaining. Oh boy. This one, like uh, this one, the Basile Uomo, again, green, pungent. Not as animalic as the Basile Uomo. More just like very intense greenery from um, the forest. I'm getting something um, licorice or um, like absinthe type note in here. Um, so there is kind of like a eucalyptus like um, camphoric touch along with it. But whenever I smell something absinthe like or licorice, I get a booziness under there. And this one definitely has that. So this is really, really good. Really good. Um, it's almost like this. Basil uh, Womo, but not animalic. Wow. This is amazing. Freaking fantastic. It's Francesco Smalto. I don't know anything about what happened with this. Is it a designer? Uh, I can't remember. I believe he's a designer. But this fragrance, man, I wish I had 100 ml of it because it is to die for delicious. Really, really great stuff. Anyway, let's move on. Lots of goodies still. Okay, this next one is another one that I've been wanting to get. So when I first got into the fragrance hobby and buying, I didn't have a lot of big budget for fragrances. Now I do because I have, you know, kind of killed off a lot of my hobbies and I focus on fragrances because not only do I do reviews and things like that, I'm kind of building a little bit of a library here, a perfume library for my clients. Uh, this is from the house of Yoop. Is it Yoop? This is What About Adam? Um... This one is one that I've wanted not only because it has a cult following, but also because it's tomato leaf. And I'm so happy I have a bottle now. Really, really happy. It's a 75 ml, not 100 ml. Uh, and you know, I don't have any Yoop fragrances. This is the first Yoop fragrance I have, I've had for a long time. I wore the original Yoop back in the early 90s, but I got tired of it. But now, in the current days, this is the only Yoop I have, and it's a vin. I don't know if I would call this a vintage. It's not as old, but um, glad I have it. But this, let's smell it because it's kind of tomato leafy as I had heard. Oh yes. Wow. I'm surprised that they actually launched a fragrance like this. It's very fresh. It's definitely got the designer-ish qualities, but that initial blast is tomato leaf, like bitter green, kind of minty. That's really, really good. It doesn't smell very uh, complex. Uh, it does definitely have a designer edge to it, as I said, but such a unique fragrance. Wow. Really, really great. What about Adam? I really, really love the way that smells. And it, it you know, I, I guess I had missed that because it's not that old. I think it's a 2000s release, not 90s. I, I could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. But what about Adam? I'm so glad I have this. Okay, this next one. Guy Mattiolo. Don't even know who this is, but I read about it. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to take a chance. I haven't even opened it. I hope this one sprays because um, the last one that, did, that had to be opened didn't spray. And I'm going to go back to that other fragrance. We're going to try it again. But this is Guy Mattiolo Womo. This seems a little more modern. Anybody know about this house? I don't know why I decided to buy this one, but the, re the reviews were good for it. So let's give it a try. I hope it sprays. Please, please spray. 
It sprays. Wow. This doesn't smell very old. Did I even buy this? <laughs> Shit. I don't know why I would buy this, but it kind of reminds me of CK1. Huh. Why did I buy this? I don't understand. Anyway, whatever. It's not bad, but uh, it's like CK1. That's what it's reminding me of. Weird. Anybody know this one? Let me know. Put a comment down so I can find out. So this next one, Rocco Barocco. Anybody know of this one? So I believe this came as a gift. It was not even something I purchased and it's kind of used. It's called joint. Is it a cigarette? Is it a marijuana joint? So this one I did look up, but I did not buy. This, I believe, was sent to me as a gift because obviously, as you can see, it's used a little bit. Uh, and this is very animalic. Wow. Very, very musky. I could smell civet. Or it's... Wait, is it... It's like castorium. No, it's civet. It's definitely civet, but lots, lots of like very, very intense kind of... Uh, uh, smells like very very like oak mossy and patchouli and uh, spices. Wow, that's really good. This is really really good. I think this is definitely not a modern generation fragrance. This is a 30 ml Rocco Barocco and sadly it's been used. It's called Joint but oh man that is fantastic. Fantastic fragrance. I'm so glad I have that. And even though I didn't order it. So I, I wonder if I ordered Guy Mattiolo. Who knows? Okay, so this next one also came as a gift, I believe. Chevignon. And I did smell this one because I was looking at why did I order Chevignon? I didn't order Chevignon. This did remind me of uh, CK1 as well. Um, like this. Anybody know this one? It... It's kind of like reminding me of it, but it also reminds me of a few other designers. I'm not the biggest fan of this one. It's a lot fresher. I mean, I don't mind it, but that's not what I was buying. So it came as a gift. I guess I'm, I'm happy that it came because it's nice to have the vintages here, but uh, it wasn't one I would rush out to buy. And then this came along as well. I don't know why I got this Burberry Brit Splash. Well, I mean, I mean, I'm thankful that I got gifts along with it, but I'm not the, I'm not a fan of this particular fragrance. Anybody know this one, Burberry Brit, Burberry Brit Splash? Is it a spray? It is a spray. Definitely not vintage. Let's see how it smells. It's very fresh, a bit metallic, very aromatic, citrusy. Oh, very modern. Let me know if you're a fan of that one. Okay, I saved this one uh, till the last. And I wanna show you this. I had bought this fragrance once before and I actually aired a video, a haul video. I brought it back from Spain in a Spanish perfume shop in, uh, I'm drawing a blank with the name of the city right now. Anyway, it's Aqua de Genova, Colonia. You guys know this one? I had it in a haul video back then, and uh, that channel actually went under, obviously. But I had to buy another one because I decanted and gave away a bunch of it to friends uh, and family. But this is the bottle right here. It's like an Eau de Cologne style fragrance. It comes with a, a pump sprayer. Like that. So, anybody know this house? It's Acqua di Genova, so it's Genoa, Italy. I was in Genoa, Italy in um, 2019. I don't recall seeing this fragrance anywhere. So, but it's a great fresh citrus eau de cologne style fragrance that's pretty darn good. Uh, if you don't know it, do check that brand out. But it's not readily available everywhere. It's hard to find, but a great one here. So those are all the vintages that are vintage except for a few that were gifted. 
This is not a vintage, but it's discontinued from the house of um, Ralph Lauren, Supreme Leather. I never bought this one, and a friend said to me, a friend is selling uh, a set of this with a mini, uh, a gift set. Do you want it? And I'm like, how much is it? I said it's $80. I'm like, okay, I'll buy it because I always wanted this one because I like the fragrance. And I didn't really dig too much into this fragrance, but when I got it and I started wearing it, I'm like, wow, this actually smells really, really great. Even the oud is great, but somehow I've turned out to have a large Supreme Leather and then a small Supreme Oud, and I thought it was a gift set of both of them. But anyway, I have a bottle of the Supreme Oud. I probably have about a half left in there, and it was a tester bottle that I bought, but now I have a mini of this and a full bottle of, uh, of Supreme Leather. Let me know if you're fans of those fragrances. I think they did a pretty good job of those. The Oud is a very, uh, I think it's good. It didn't have the greatest performance, but as smells, it had great smells. So I've got four more fragrances here I'm gonna to talk to you about, and these are feminine targeted classic fragrances from the house of Guerlain. And I recently posted about these, so if you've been following me on Instagram, you pretty much know uh, what they are. But I didn't post about this one, and this one I bought it as a tester off of FragranceNet without a cap. It's Lure Blue, uh, and this is the Eau de Toilette. I have the Eau de Parfum here as well. Man, Eau de Parfum smells great. I haven't worn the Eau de Toilette yet, but this was like $22 without the cap. I quickly snatched it up, but um, I wish I had a cap for it. And I think the, um, let me get the Lure Blue in the Eau de Parfum out. It's a 100 ml, I believe. No, it's a 75 ml. This is a 50 ml. Lure Blue Eau de Toilette and Lure Blue Eau de Parfum. So I really, really love Lure Bleu Eau de Parfum. As I said, I haven't worn this one yet, but Lure Bleu Eau de Parfum reminds me of a very, very classic and very, very expensive and, uh, you know, like very, very rich, like very rich in price, but also rich in the, 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 the fats they use to create the soap. Smells amazing. It reminds me of classic soaps. Reminds me of, you know, soaps when you go to like a very, very expensive soap store. And every time I've been wearing the Lure Bleu in the Eau de Parfum, I just feel like I've washed with this very, very beautifully expensive soap. Amazing fragrance. I did not know how great this was, but both of these I bought from FragranceNet. And they were both, uh, you know, at a great discount, but uh, I thought this was really great discount uh, for like $23 for a 50 ml. So this Mitsuko, I believe I spoke about this one uh, in another video, did I? I think I might have featured it in the haul video. Uh, I can't remember, um, but Mitsuko I'm testing out. But this is definitely new, Jardin de Bagatelle. Is that how you say it? Jardin's de Bagatelle. So this came out in the 80s and you can definitely smell it's like it came from the 80s. It's big, bad, bad kind of shoulder pad wearing women's floral fragrances. Uh, although now it seems like it's watered down, but it's tuberose and lots of like yellow flowers, like ylang ylang and things like that. Definitely takes me back to those days of, you know, the shoulder pads and I saw my mom and her friends wearing these like big, uh, uh, these are the kind of fragrances they would wear. But uh, it's a great one to have here and to, you know, for the clients that will come here and uh, want to smell some classics, you can pull these out. Again, these are not vintage. Mitsuko, it's, it, it's in current formulation. Jardins de Bagatelle is in current formulation. This most likely is current formulation, the Eau de Toilette of Lord Bleu. And this is definitely the current formulation of Lord Bleu. Um, I think that's pretty much it for today's haul video. This is a very long video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, let me know what your thoughts are on these fragrances. Do you like any of them? Have you worn any of them? Uh, let me know, put a comment down. Like some of the more obscure ones, have you worn them? Uh, I'd like to find out what you think. And I'm gonna go back to this fragrance once again uh, to see if I can get it sprayed because I will be really pissed off if this thing does not spray. Maybe I might have to stick something in the, okay, there it's coming out now. So maybe it'll spray now. There it goes. This to me looks like 80s Art Deco revival. So this one, I can smell that something's turned a little bit up, up top, but it looks like it's gonna be leading, developing into like a, a aromatic and a, 
uh, kind of an oak mossy uh, bass note. I don't know anything about this, but initial blast, a little turned, but it's settling to a really, really nice smelling fragrance. Glad it worked finally in a gorgeous looking bottle. Don't you think it's beautiful? Anyway, let me know your thoughts on these fragrances. If you've sampled them, put a comment down so I can find out. And any of the obscure ones I spoke to you about today, any info you have on them, please do put a comment down so I can read your comments to learn about these because I don't know too much about them. I just took a chance. I was kind of gambling on these vintages and classic men's fragrances because, as I said, I'm trying to build a little library here. And it's nice to have some of the classics uh, here along with all the modern fragrances. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. Glad you enjoyed the no hat video today. If you have any questions or comments, please do list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. All right, it's kind of strange when you lose track of how many fragrances you buy, correct? Well, when I, you were watching the video, I was talking about this fragrance, Guy Mattiolo. I was thinking to myself, I did not buy that fragrance. Sure enough, I went back to my uh, invoice or receipt uh, when I checked out and this is not listed. So turns out I've received four free fragrances for buying all that vintage, which is kind of interesting because when I smelled this, I thought to myself, I would not be ordering this. So it is, this was gifted to me by the perfume shop that I bought all those vintages. Didn't know anything about this one, but uh, as I said, it did remind me a little bit of CK1, but if you know this one, let me know, because that's what it kind of reminds me of. It's clean, it's peppery, uh, it's fresh, uh, but uh, I don't hate it. Uh, I just did not what I would buy, but it's very interesting that I got not only this as a gift, this amazing fragrance joined as a gift. I would have bought a whole bottle of this if I knew how good this was. This is probably one of the best things that I've got in this whole haul in addition to Equitos. And I'm really sad that Equitos is not a spray bottle because I hate to dab or splash. I like to spray. And this joint by Roca Barocco is fantastic. fan freaking -tastic. Great, great fragrance. It's amazing how it smells and all that kind of musk. The Chauvignon, um, I guess it's nice to have. This was also gifted. Uh, again, amazing folks gifting me fragrances. And then this Burberry Brit Splash, gifted. So I've gotten all four, plus they also threw in this, Dunhill Edition uh, Eau de Toilette. It's like a small sample, a tiny little sample, which I also actually just bought a, a full bottle of from the Fragrance Net recently. Amazing, this is the best transaction I've had and one of the best things in this whole entire video is this fragrance. I think I'm going to search for a full 100 ml bottle of this because it's that good. Anyway, I wanted to report back on this, me not knowing about it. Anyway, appreciate you tuning in. Thank you. Bye.